<clears throat> All right, welcome everybody to this webinar for the fashion industry essentials. I'm so excited that you guys are joining me. My name is Chloe. I'm a fashion industry essentials grad. Um, I graduated in 2017. I am an author, blogger, YouTuber, and a former visual merchandiser. Um, I am really excited to host this webinar and kind of walk you guys through the program and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so I'm really excited to go through this and show you what the fashion industry essentials is all about. So let's see here. Okay, here we go. Alrighty, so what is the fashion industry essentials basically, right? Um, I know there's been a lot of uh, talk about the newest program, Fashion Business Essentials, but we wanna talk about the fashion industry essentials today and what it is. Um, and let's see, if you guys have any questions, um, you can submit them uh, via the Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. The Yellow Brick Student Success Team will ask them at the end and then we'll take about 20 minutes to walk through this whole industry essentials um, slideshow and then answer any questions that you guys may have. So, so what is the Fashion Industry Essentials? It is a completely online remote program. It is 100% on demand, it's self-paced. You don't need anything besides an internet connection and a laptop or other mobile device. And what's great about this is you have a full year to complete the program, which is why I enjoy it so much. Um, I think it's really complimentary to everybody's lifestyle and how crazy things can get. So it's really nice to, um, have that option to be able to take it whenever, wherever you need to. And there's no due dates, nothing is graded, um, no due dates other than the year that you have to complete it, which is awesome. So I think this is a really great program and it's basically just an introduction to the fashion industry for people to see what it's really like to work in there and also what field of the fashion industry that um, might interest you or suit you best. There's a video on there too. <clears throat> so let's see. If we can go to the next slide. Who is the fashion industry essentials for? Basically, Anybody who's interested in fashion, who's passionate about fashion, who wants to get more exposure to the industry and see what it's really like. Um, it's really great to, in case you guys want to learn how to build a portfolio, which I found really helpful when I took it. And um, if you're looking to get insight into other areas of the fashion industry because you're not sure which field you want because they're all so exciting, this is really great. Um, I learned a lot about like fashion production and like marketing and things like that, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so I really liked that part as well. It's just, you know, covers all bases for people who are interested in any aspect of the fashion industry. All right. Whoops. So what does it cover? There's five courses, as you guys are seeing all on the screen here with over 70 on-demand videos that are really great. I love how many different instructors there are that you get to learn from, which is really cool. Um, you're getting firsthand knowledge of what it's really like by seasoned fashion experts. There's writers, there's designers. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember, because I took it four years ago, there was a TED talk with like Isaac Mizrahi, which I grew up loving his show and his sketches and everything like that. But um, I think it's really nice and legitimate to learn these things from people that are actually in this industry. So you're like, okay, this is like firsthand knowledge. This is what it's like. There's no sugarcoating it. Like in the movies or anything, you're actually like hearing what it's like. And it can be challenging and it's a competitive industry, but you're learning that all firsthand and learning all the things that can make you successful um, when taking or when going into the industry. Um, Uh, so yeah, you learn from a bunch of different people, uh, like I said, so here are some of the people that you'll see a lot during the course. Um, I like how diverse it is and how you, you know, hear from the best of the best from people from Kate Spade or 
uh, you know, gosh, a bunch of different brands. There's Brandon Maxwell, Rebecca Minkoff, all those well-known names. Um, so it's really nice to hear their insight as well from how they started to climbing up to the top. So what skills will you be developing? A bunch of things, um, uh, let's see. So there's like the resume writing guide, which is great. Um, I know a lot of the times that's the biggest challenge is like what to include on a resume and your portfolio helps a lot with that too. Um, there's a bunch of different assignments like mood board, which I really liked. I love making mood boards. I think they're really cool. There's fashion design, there's um, accessory creation, uh, packaging the things that you create, marketing, photography, and creating your portfolio. And there's gonna be numerous assignments like that um, prompted throughout the program. And they have alternative assignments, which is great. So you can choose which one that you would like to do. Um, and it's also great too, because Yellow Brick loves to share students' assignments on social media. So if you're looking for inspiration, uh, you can check those out too. They have a link uh, to their Instagram student highlight and they'll link that in the chat so you guys can see more examples. But I think that's really inspiring too. So you can see other like-minded individuals and what they create and what they put out there um, in the course. Um, I think that's really cool as well. I find it inspiring how you know creative some of these peers of ours are. Um, what students can create. I think it's really, really awesome. So why should you take the fashion industry essentials? Um, well, speaking of kind of like the first course, like who is it for? You're interested in the fashion industry. You're curious as to what it's actually like. You don't know what field you want to go into. You have a bunch of questions, right? And that's basically what this course is going to help you uh, kind of direct you towards. So there are a couple things in particular I love about this course. First of all, I love that it's completely mobile. You can take it anywhere. I know a lot of courses aren't like that, which they should be. And I think it's awesome. Um, I think the program is very considerate of how hectic life can get for people. So I love that there aren't due dates to worry about, which I think is like, you know, can be such a stressor. You do have to complete the program, like I said, within a year from the sign up date. So as long as you're not a super mega procrastinator, it's really, really great. Um, another thing I love about this course is how affordable it is. Uh, now, some of you may raise your eyebrows and think, what are you talking about? That looks kind of pricey. But if you compare the cost to any other degree or credited program, this is a very convenient route to take. With that said, you do not earn a degree from this course or any college credits, but you do earn a certificate, create a portfolio and get your foot in the door of the fashion industry. And this is a great way to see if the fashion industry is right for you. All right, so these are some of the assignments and examples. Um, personally, I really liked course one's assignment for mood board. Like I said, I think they're really fun to make and put together. Um, and I really like designing the portfolio too. I've never done anything like that before, but I think it was really great to be able to put together a collection of all my work that I've done. And I have used that too um, since this course to showcase my merchandising photos of displays that I've put together. Um, but there's, they're really cool. Like even course three was hard for me cause I'm not really good with making things with my hands. So making like a signature bag was really hard, <laughs> uh, for me, but it was great because it kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone and I learned new things and, uh, different kind of techniques on how to make bags, which was really, really interesting. I just love learning all the various aspects of the, of this course, because it makes you appreciate each element of the industry. <clears throat> and then, like I said earlier, these are examples of some, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, assignments done by former students. Um, so you can tell these are really pretty. I love this mood board in the down left corner here. I love all the neutrals and nude coloring is really pretty. Um, looking at all the clothes and dresses and graphics is just really, really cool. I love seeing what peers do. It's really inspiring. All right, so how will you benefit from this course? Similarly to what I mentioned in one of the past slides, there are multiple benefits from taking this course. Um, my biggest one is always that it's completely on your own time whenever you want to do it, because I know a lot of courses aren't like that. Um, there are payment plan options that you can do too. And uh, you just, it's a great introduction, you know? So if you do want to go to college and major in something in the fashion industry, this is a great way to figure out what that might be if you're undecided right now. And you just learn everything um, 
all different fields or possible directions for the fashion industry, resume and interview tips. I know that's a really big one I get um, on my YouTube channel. I talk a lot about that too, because a lot of people are like, what should I do for a merchandising interview or how should I uh, create a resume? And this also covers that as well. So what are the next steps? The application process is quick and simple. The application takes less than five minutes and the minimum age requirement is at least 13 years old. This is a non-credit course, which is designed to increase access to the fashion industry and therefore does not require any prerequisites. This course can be taken while in school and or while working a full-time job as it is all on demand and self-paced. You will hear from us via email about five business days after you apply and upon acceptance, you may enroll that day. If you need more info, you can refer to the Frequently Asked Questions page, scroll through the course catalog, and or request and watch the sneak peek to get a preview of the course. You can also schedule a call with the Yellow Brick team, and the links are available in the chat over here, as well as on the yellowbrick.co slash fashion. All right, so here are some student testimonials, which is always really, really nice to see. Um, you want to be able to trust your peers and see what they really thought of it. And if their testimonials don't do it for you, uh, some of the fashion industry essentials grads have ended up working at companies like Michael Kors, Anthropology, Lululemon, All Saints, Polo Ralph Lauren, and many others, just to name a few small businesses you might have heard of. If you'd like to hear from other fashion industry essentials grads and what they've been up to after they accomplish after completing this course, you can visit yellowbrick.co slash reviews slash fashion or the Yellowbrick Fashion YouTube student playlist. I have a webinar that I did last fall and there's a couple other old uh, webinars on there as well if you'd like to watch those. And lastly, who is Yellowbrick? The person that's putting on this whole webinar and offering you guys this course. It's a partnership with top universities and brand partners. We create experiences that tap into passion points to spark success, fuel personal advancement, and unlock doors to fulfilling paths for our students. You can visit the website for more information or the course offering. Um, and that's about all I have for my slides. So we can see what kind of questions that you guys have. I went through that much quicker than anticipated and much quicker than I thought. So, <clears throat> hi guys, it's Kristen here from the Yellow Brick Success Team. So I will help Chloe in uh, figuring out which questions to answer first. But just a reminder, you know, anything that we just went over, please feel free to ask your questions using the Q&A tool um, and feel free also to use the chat. Uh, we are here to answer your questions. Um, so the first one is, what if you have a 2.7 GPA? Can you still get into the fashion school? I've always dreamt of going to FIT. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can definitely go. This isn't like um, nothing's graded. So you can basically do on your own time and um, learn as you go. And I think that takes a lot of the pressure off too, so you can learn. And I know things like that are just, that always put so much pressure and um, you can you can definitely still do it. Uh, I would definitely study as much as you can, um, maybe do some tutoring or just take this, this course is definitely gonna help too with some, um, what do I wanna say? Questions you might have about the fashion industry. It could strengthen some like loose ends that you might have about certain things. Um, but I would say, don't, don't let that stop you. I mean, you can do whatever you want as long as you work hard enough for it. And I don't think that should hinder you at all. Let's see. The next question is, do you get feedback on assignments if nothing is graded? Chloe, do you feel comfortable with that one? Um. Well, I know that on some projects that you submit or some, well, not necessarily assignments, but some projects, um, it's required that you interact with things that other students have submitted. Um, so you can kind of network a little bit. Um, so you get like peer feedback, but um, on assignments, it'll tell you like the results of how you did, but it's not graded, if that makes sense. 
Uh, students do get recorded feedback from the portfolio once that's submitted, however. Oh, that's true, yeah. Okay, personal question. What made you choose the program, Chloe? Oh, um, well, I was just really interested, honestly. Um, I took this course about four years ago, so I'm a little rusty in remembering all the details about it, but um, I had worked in the restaurant industry when I was like 16, and then uh, I learned, I was that girl that was always like overdressed and limited to clothing, right? I was the girly girl. I was convinced I was going to move to New York and live this high-end fashion life. And then I started learning other aspects of the fashion industry and I learned what merchandising was and I just kind of fell in love with it. And then um, I moved from California to Washington and I was able to transfer um, retail jobs. So I was working at Tommy Hilfiger. And then later on that winter, I discovered this course and I figured, why not? This is kind of in the direction that I want to go. So I took the course and then a couple of years later, I became a visual merchandiser for Mattel. Um, but it's always just been a part of me. I've always been really fascinated with how things run in the fashion industry. And I just think it's a really cool um, industry in general. Awesome. And in case you just want to repeat it, how long did it take you to, to complete the course? So I started in the winter of 2017 and I did utilize the full year because for whatever reason, I decided to take a course while I was working two jobs during like Black Friday. So it was just like that whole season was such a blur. Um, but honestly, it's you can do it however quickly you want to do it. There's no like time limit. Um, if you need to use the full year, use the full year. If you can get it done in a couple months, then do that. Um, everybody's different and everybody has different kind of, you know, lives going on. Um, but for me, I utilize the full year just because of the things that I was doing at the time. Awesome. I see um, Yasmin asked for some more clarification about the feedback on the assignments. Um, it is from um, a team that Yellow Brick has um, curated is, is who the feedback is from. Um, unfortunately, we don't have Rebecca Minkoff or Brandon Maxwell being able to look at your portfolios as much as we would love that. Um, someone also asked, um, have you ever wanted to start your own brand, Chloe? Um, gosh, I feel like brand is kind of broad. Clothing brands, not necessarily. I had tried to do an Etsy shop and I wasn't too passionate about it, so I didn't really try too hard. Uh, but now personally, I manage my blog, I manage my YouTube channel. So it's kind of like, that's my brand as it were. Um, I just wrote a book too, which isn't fashion related, but I just like that element of like blogging lifestyle and fashion pieces. And I think it's, um, that's the kind of brands that I'm trying to build, I guess. And a lot of the videos and blog posts that I've done have been regarding yellow brick or merchandising because there's not a whole lot out there about merchandising. So I feel like I kind of found my niche with others who are curious about merchandising and what um, different fields there are like visual or digital or e-commerce or other things like that. And that's just, I call myself the amateur fashion industry educator when it comes to merchandising. Cause I basically just do this, but with like, you know, uh, people who have questions for me about merchandising and I answer their questions in YouTube videos and blog posts. And that's just kind of how I've built my brand in a way. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, Diane, Diane asks, what is the average age range? Looks like for young college bound or college grads. Yes, we definitely have. Um, and the average um, student is typically, you know, teenager um, to mid 20s. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't have anyone that's, you know, of a little bit older age range. The great thing about this course is that it's really about your passion for fashion. So, you know, a lot of people you might, might have seen on social media, um, Kendra, and she's a mom, um, I think, you know, mid thirties, she worked 10 years in finance and she decided she really wanted to pursue fashion and start her own brand. Um, so the, this course really is for anyone, it doesn't really matter your age, you're looking to learn about fashion, then this is great for you. Um, Chloe, what made you start making YouTube videos about the course? I, well, for one of the videos um, 
which is a, a private one. I had to share it through the course. It was kind of like a your pitch, which was an assignment for the course. And then um, I spontaneously decided to do like a review about the course because like me, I had never heard of it when I was signing up for it. So I was like, okay, is, is this legit? Like, I don't know. I've never heard of this before. Like, what is it? And then after I took it, I really liked it. And I'm like, you know, there's more than likely other people like me who are seeing this, but don't really know what it is. So I made a YouTube video kind of reviewing the entire program. And then I got a lot of comments about that. And then the more I posted about it and I kind of did a couple more videos like, hey, this is what the lessons look like. Um, people just seem to keep, you know, wanting more and more feedback and like questions and things like that. So I just kept covering it because people were really um, interested in the course like I was. Awesome. Um, someone asked, how many sewing projects are there and are there instructions for how to accomplish them? Um, I'll, I'll answer this one, unless Chloe, you want to add something after. Um, so the course is set up so that there's alternative assignments. So if you don't want to sew, you don't have to. If you want to sew, you can. Um, there's probably anywhere from two to five sewing projects. This course really is designed so that you can make the most out of it however you want to. So if you want to do an assignment multiple times, you can. Again, you have access, unlimited access for a full year. Um, if again, if you check our social media, we have people who've created bags, who've created dresses, who've created bracelets. Um, if you actually search the hashtag Parsons times Team Vogue, there is a ton of examples of all the great things that people have sewn. So definitely check that out. Um, Chloe, what is your favorite part about fashion or visual merchandising? Um, I think, I don't, oh gosh, what a good question. I love so many things about it, about fashion. I like all of it. It's just so interesting to me. It just feels like in another life, I was part of, you know, the big hustle and bustle of the high-end fashion. I just think it's so cool. Um, for merchandising, I, it's just awesome to be able to have a career where I can be creative every day. Um, I did lose my job to COVID, so I'm, I'm no longer a merchandiser as of right now. Um, but it was really fun to create displays that interacted with customers and kind of talk to them. And um, most recently, I was a visual merchandiser at American Girl, which it's like, what little girl doesn't know American Girl, right? Um, so to be able to make these displays with dolls that I grew up with for these new little girls, even like my niece, and for them to just like to see that look on their face, like, oh, my gosh, this is so magical. Um, it's really cool to be able to create that for someone. Um, and then experience that, you know, their reaction to what you've made, I think is awesome. Definitely. Chloe, someone's asking if you can just um, tell them your blog name and your YouTube handle. Oh, it's um, Close Call, C-H-L-O-S-C-A-L-L. -L -L. Um, I could probably type it in the chat. Yeah, I did type it in there. So it, it is there, guys. You can you can search that. And again, she's tagged on uh, at yellowbrook.fashion. And then she has a, if you go to her profile, you can check her link in her, in her bio and there's her blog, YouTube, everything, which is super great. Um, Chloe, someone asked about the Fashion Business Essentials course, um, which you are also taking. Do I you want to explain the difference between the two so far? So, so far, I'm only on the second module, or I just finished the second module of Fashion Business Essentials, so I haven't completed it yet, but so far, basically the biggest difference is the fashion industry essentials is your introduction to the fashion industry, and then the fashion business essentials is kind of like a part two, how to be successful in certain, in certain um, elements of the industry. Um, so like managing fashion production, and then I'll focus on sustainability and where to source um, items to create a product, things like that. So that's the biggest thing. It's like, Hey, here's the fashion industry. Here's everything that you need to know. If you're interested business essentials, it's like, okay, let's get down to business. These are how, uh, these are like the different courses to learn how to, um, be successful in the fashion industry. Awesome. If that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And definitely we have, you know, our course catalog, our sneak peek video. If you're interested in the fashion business essentials course, I would definitely recommend entering your email for that. And I'll, I'll put the link in the chat. 
Um, and there's, you know, definitely more resources there. Um, Chloe, would you be able to speak on um, how fashion industry essentials teaches about social media branding and growth? Um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember. Um, I know there was a part about like marketing photography, which was interesting and, um, like finding your niche. Um, it's honestly hard for me to remember that part. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, definitely. There, um, there's a whole module on social media marketing. So the digital age, you know, how the, mar the industry has really changed and really re like revolves around social media, um, influencers, affiliate work, things like that. Um, and it also, a couple of the assignments, you know, ask you to post on your social media and, and build out a page where, you know, you're really focusing on the key elements that the instructors are teaching you. Um, so that's a great question. Thank you. Chloe, I think we have a question here that says, if you're not into the design part of the industry, would fashion business essentials be better? Um, would you like to answer that? <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm only, I'm only two modules in, so I can't really say completely what the whole course covers. Um, of course, you can see like a preview of each one. Um, but if you, if you want to take it, you can. Yeah, I think like Chloe said, they go hand in hand. So you really can take both. They cover different things. Um, I would definitely just recommend getting more information on fashion, fashion business essentials to really decide if it's, if it's right for you um, because the course catalog and the sneak peek will really give you insight into what's being covered. Um, so I hope that helps. Yeah. Someone asked, how can you increase your chances of getting into fashion school? Um, I just want to quickly mention, um, referring back to a couple of the slides in case you guys missed the quote, someone actually said that um, this course helps them get into grad school. So a, a lot of our students actually take this course because they're not sure what they want to do. And some of them, this, this is not a four-year program. So a lot of people get a taste, they understand yes, fashion is what I want to do. And now I know I want to go into fashion marketing. I want to go into fashion merchandising. And that's when they decide to pursue, you know, grad school or even fashion school um, if design or something is, is your area of interest. So definitely this course can help you. Um, it's not guaranteed, obviously, um, but definitely doing programs in fashion, you know, getting kind of internships, I think that's a, uh, what a lot of schools are looking for. And Parsons is definitely a really great school and has a lot of great programs. Um, Chloe, can you speak to, does the certificate help with getting jobs in fashion industry? I definitely believe so. Um, it helped me get a job as a merchandiser for Mattel. Um, and I worked at American Girl, so that's not necessarily fashion. But I think that just showing that you put in work and once you have a portfolio and you can be like, Hey, I have, I know all this. I know the basics. This is what I learned. This is my portfolio of all the hard work I put into it. It's definitely going to increase your chances. Um, I think it helped me significantly because once I brought that up and showed that to my employer, my former employer, they were definitely really impressed by that and uh, really liked that I knew everything that I did. Awesome. And again, if you guys want to check out, I will throw the link in there. Um, there's a bunch of other reviews um, that you can check out from other grads who have said that the course has helped them score jobs, um, again, at those companies that were on the graphic um, before. What would you tell a teenager that's transitioning from high school to college, how to get into the industry and fashion college? How to get into the industry career-wise? I believe so, yes. 
I would say it just kind of depends on what part of the industry you want to get into. So for me, wanting to be um, a merchandiser, I had to get a job in retail, right? Because I got a lot of hands-on experience. I helped with floor sets and product launches and helped direct them and things like that. So I think it really depends um, if you can intern somewhere, if you can shadow someone. Um, I think it's it's good to have like the the what I want to say, like the book smart, like taking the course and knowing, having that knowledge. But I think hands-on experience um, is very important as well. So it does depend on the industry. You know, personally speaking, I got a job in retail, so that way I could get the hands-on experience. Um, so that's what I would recommend if you're able to. Awesome. Um, someone asked, is fashion essentials, I'm guessing she means fashion industry essentials have um, a course just like fashion design course? Uh, Tiffany, would you be able to elaborate on that question? I'm not sure we fully um, uh, understand that question. Um, Lee asked, can a fashion lookbook help your work get featured in editorials? That's a good question. Um, I think you definitely need a lookbook or a portfolio in order to show your work. Um, this course does help you build a portfolio, get started on, on what that's supposed to look like and have. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, depending on what you are trying to do, you know, you just add and, and build to that portfolio. Um, yeah, Tiffany said that, yes, does it have fashion design? So this course is, has a module, the first module is visual style, um, and there's, you know, design portion. So like it teaches you about the history of design, but again, it's not a how to sew class. It's not a, you're making this clothing collection. Um, it's more really about the industry side of things, you know, what jobs are available? How, how does the industry work? You know, if, if somebody has a design, how does it get marketed and then sold and, and, you know, manufactured? So I hope that answers your question. Um, Chloe, would you recommend going to a fashion college or studying it on the side? Honestly, it just depends how serious you are about a career in fashion. Um, if you already know what you want to do, then maybe go to fashion college, you know, like right off the bat, if you're like, okay, this is what I want to do. I know it. If you're still a little undecided, study it on the side. Um, I know for me in California, when I was going to community college, I was taking a couple of fashion classes on the side because it wasn't like a widely known um, well, it wasn't like a widely offered thing at my community college. So I took what I could like trend forecasting. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, so if you know what you, if you know already what you're going to do and that you're like adamant that that's what it is, go ahead and just go to the four year or go to college. But if you're still um, kind of undecided, then I would recommend doing it on the side, but that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah. Awesome. And Chloe, how did you manage taking the course while doing other jobs? I don't know. I'm still very proud of myself. I was just basically very motivated. I knew this is what I wanted to do. I saw an opportunity that took, um, that presented itself and I took it. Um, things definitely calmed down once I wasn't doing the, a bunch of like two jobs during uh, Black Friday, which was crazy. Um, and then after the new year, I was able to focus more on it, but I was, it was kind of nice, like, again, to not have any due dates. I didn't have that pressure or feel like I was failing because I couldn't. Um, literally because it's not graded, uh, but it, it's, I love that so much about this course is that you can do it leisurely. Um, I think that's just great for people who might be working a few jobs, but I did it and I'm really proud of myself for doing it uh, while I was working multiple jobs. Awesome. Robert asks, do you have a program that focuses on marketing strategies? In this course, in our Fashion Business Essentials course, there's a whole module dedicated to marketing. Um, with marketing, you know, things are always kind of connected. So it, it is top of mind throughout each module. But yes, um, it's, it's a module inside of the course, but not a separate course just about marketing. Um, Chloe, is trend forecasting a part of fashion merchandising? 
It definitely has um, a lot to do with fashion merchandising. I think uh, I've talked about this a lot too, like on my YouTube channel, I feel like um, a good merchandiser is gonna be up to date on the latest trends. Um, and trend forecasting, I just thought was really interesting to see how things come into being popular. Um, you learn about things on the runway and how the first items that you see on the catwalk are really watered down when they're introduced into retail stores. And then they're slowly built up to look nearly what they looked like when they were first introduced. Um, but it's really cool to learn about like, you know how like they'll be like, oh, this is the color of 2021 or things like that. I think that's just, you know, really interesting to learn. Um, but I think it has a great deal to do with merchandising as well, because I always say like with seasons, you know, you can always take advantage of that. Like for summer coming up, you might want to be merchandising, say like um, platform sandals and maxi dresses and sun hats and swimsuits and maybe bucket hats or tie dye shirts and high waisted denim shorts, things like that. So it's like you notice what's becoming popular and then you're able to merchandise off of what people want to see or wear for the season. So, yes. <laughs> Awesome. Um, asks, can you elaborate a bit more on the portion of social media blogging? Do you need to be tech savvy already to take those modules? No. Fashion industry essentials, you know, has you starting at, at square one. You know, you might be an expert blogger, but this course can help you be even better. You might never have had a blog, created a graphic, and this course will say, here's how you do it. You know, here are the instructions. Um, here's the platform, you know, use Canva to create a graphic, you know, it's a free platform. You know, the great thing about this course is that we only require that you have a free, that you have an internet connection and a device to take the course on. So you do not need a Photoshop license or anything like that or a sewing machine even. You know, you can learn how to be tech savvy through this course. Um, Chloe, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add to that. No, I think you covered it. That's pretty much what I was going to say. <laughs> awesome. Um, and someone asks, Chloe, how do you stay up to date with regulating trends and upcoming trends? I feel like nowadays, um, which I feel like they cover a lot in both courses, the fashion industry and fashion business essentials, is how much the industry has changed over the years and how much of the industry is basically on social media now. So staying up with trends is basically like TikTok, right? There's like so many fashion trends of a bunch of people trying new products and being like, you need to get this, you need to get this, or people being influenced by those um, who are wearing certain things. And then you go on Instagram and bloggers have basically taken over, you know, influencing people on what to wear. And like, there was a book that I read that back in the nineties, it was always like celebrities, what are they wearing on the red carpet? And nowadays people our age are more focused on what the influencers are wearing rather than celebrities. Like we don't really care. So I think um, social media is a great way to, stay on top of things. And I always go on Pinterest. Like that's where I used to also look for ideas for merchandising if I was kind of stuck. But um, it's it's a fast paced uh, thing to keep up with for sure. So definitely social media, I think is like the number one way to stay up to date with trends. Awesome. And what do you need to study, learn and know how to be a fashion merchandiser? Um, this course, <laughs> um, but also just like the basics, I think a lot of the things that I learned to become a merchandiser, I learned um, on the job, you know, like how to steam clothes, how to pin clothes. Um, and every business is kind of different. But I think once you have the hands on experience, that definitely helps too. Um, and I had a little bit of both because like for me, I didn't, I never had the job title of actually being a merchandiser. But I told them that I had like extensive knowledge about product launches because I always worked them and um, I always offered to assist with things like that so I could get the hands on experience and then add it to my portfolio or resume. Um, but yeah, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> awesome. Someone asked, how should a high school student taking this course apply and reach out to brands? Do you have any good tips, Chloe? Um, I would say it definitely takes time. So don't expect it to happen overnight. But while you're in this course, um, it'll kind of teach you how to do things like that with social media and whatnot. And um, you'll be able to build more of a presence and be able to reach out. Um, I think also with it, I think a social media presence is 
so needed because it's such a strong thing that businesses focus on and brands focus on. So I feel like once you kind of have that established and they can see what you represent, then they'll be able to um, kind of listen to you more when you reach out. And I think I read somewhere that it's more appropriate to reach out to brands over social media than emailing. I'm not really sure because I don't reach out to brands too much, but that's kind of like uh, what's recommended now, but definitely like establish yourself, find your niche and then uh, brands will kind of get the feel of if you would suit, suit them or not, if that makes sense. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Chloe. I think we've gone through all of our questions at this point. Um, so if anyone has any last minute questions, please feel free to submit them. Um, Chloe, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone for regist registering and, and coming on live. We really appreciate it. If you have any other questions, you know, you can always email us. I will enter the email um, in the chat. And yeah, we, we really enjoyed being able to give you guys some more insight. Chloe, do you have any last words? Thanks for stopping by. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this webinar and I hope we answered a lot of your questions as best as I could. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much guys. Have a great day. You too, bye.